Sure. Uh, Science Leadership Academy was founded in 2006. We opened in September 2006 with a ninth grade with 125 kids. Uh, our first graduating class was in 2010, and we've been uh, a fully inquiry-driven and project-based school since our founding. What we wanted to do was build a school where the things we were asking kids to do, the challenges we were giving to children, the opportunities that kids had um, were around doing real authentic work, work that mattered, work that they could see an immediate connection to their lives, and that um, that question that kids ask, you know, why do I need to know this, that they deserved a good answer, and that the answer was rooted in the work that they do, where the artifacts of their learning, their projects, um, stem from the really powerful questions that we ask together as a community and really serve as um, real live answers to questions that they are grappling with. Um, you guys told me that this rod had to hold two peas worth of load. Yeah? All right. How much does this nut hold? One pea. One pea. How much does that nut hold? One pea. One pea. Okay. The engineer designed it so that each nut was strong enough to hold one pea with a 50% margin of error or something if you have a thousand people on the thing jumping up and down like a pogo stick. This rod is going to hold how many peas? Two. Two pea. The left one holds the lower level. The left one holds the so lower all level. All the weight is going on top. Of all that the weight bar. ends up going right here. In the end, did the like not just like like screw off or no. did it just snap off? It How just snapped. It? Yeah, uh. because this mating, uh, it wasn't meant for this. So I don't know if it failed. Does it show? It looks like this box beam. Actually, there's a split box beam, so there's a, a crack there. Maybe it went right through there because it wasn't meant to have 2P, Toby. How much weight does the nut on like the very bottom of the whole, con whole structure hold? That all the way here? Yeah. Well, we've got at the, it, on the bottom box beam, you have one nut here, and we convinced ourselves that that only had to hold 1P. Okay. Why is that? Because this one, this lifts up this walkway perfectly fine this nut has to hold up the bottom walkway that's because each nut holds up each exactly. walkway okay well so today we were looking at um, since this is an engineering class we're looking at why uh, why things fail because we can learn more we can learn a great deal about engineering by looking at why um, why things have failed in the past and why engineers have had uh, difficulty designing and carrying those things out so we were looking at a series of um, uh, failures that have occurred in history. Let's talk about the different types of materials. Uh, brainstorm at your table. Material properties. Who can just name one to get us started? A material property. Yeah, Nabil. Flexibility. Flexibility. So I'm looking for that. That kind of material property. In your notebooks, work with your team. Come up with as many different types of material properties as your table can name. Ready, set, go. Work with your friends if you can't come up with a half a dozen. While you're finishing up, let's do this. I'm just going to start writing them down on the board. You guys will just shout them out just so we can get them written down. Ready, set, go. Thermal conductivity. Thermal, co wow. Electrical conductivity. Thermal conductivity or how well it can heat. Right? So, tell me something that's really thermally conductive. Gold. Gold, yeah. We don't make gold pots. But it is very thermally conductive. What, what do we make pots out of? Metal. What kind? Steel sometimes, yep. Iron. Iron, copper, 
right? All those things are very thermally yeah, conductive. Yeah. All right, this is a coat hanger. What's it made out of? That's an anvil. <laughs> yeah, it's made out of steel. Okay, so watch. If I take this thing, I can bang on it, right? It's steel. It's really tough. Yes, Gabby. Aren't suspension bridges like made to shake though? They are. This uh, suspension bridges and all bridges are meant to be flexible to some extent, but they nowadays they're made. Now that we've seen this disaster, we just didn't know it before. Um, now they're made so that when this starts up, the structural members stop it instantly. This. Um, this is one of a series of lessons that we're doing uh, that is leading up to a large project that they will start in two weeks. And that project will be the Rube Goldberg Challenge, where we're going to build a 20-foot long machine. Each table is responsible for a piece. And it all has to work together. And all of the lessons that they've learned will build up to that project. Um, it's very easy for students to sit in a class that's not project-based and listen to a lesson and even be able to answer tests and feel like they've learned something. But what all the research shows is that um, when that happens, um, they quickly forget their lesson. And um, uh, by doing project-based, they're actually hands-on, and they're experiencing the learning that they're doing. And by experiencing it, the learning will last longer. Mm -hmm.